everybody, and thank you for taking the time to join me today for the mobile consumer going from data to digital. My name is Shmeem Smiley, and I'm the director of Global Contact Center Solutions for Mitel. So let's get started then. So um, what I'm going to do is take you through an overview of the market trends, some of the digital expectations, as well as the habits today of uh, our digital consumers and how Mitel can help you address them and take you from dated to digital. So customer success and customer experience, they're very much intertwined. And I think when we think about customer experience, it continues to be the differentiator. Everybody has competitors and you may not have competitors today, or you may not think you have competitors today, but you will most definitely have them tomorrow. But the good thing is that you have options and the key aspect of this is that you can differentiate with price but when you do that what it really does then become is is a race to the bottom and none of us want that so the preference is to differentiate on the quality of the customer experience that you provide every single day we've shown this slide uh, a couple of times to to sort of outlay the mobile consumer and i really wanted to show you this again today because you know, the majority of us, even though, you know, we're, we're all remote and, and none of us are really commuting that much, if at all, um, a large amount of us, the majority of us, irrespective of age, are still spending a large majority of our lives engaging with our mobile devices. And although this picture does remind us and it reminds me most certainly of days gone by, and I cannot wait to be on the tube again, complaining about overcrowding, and all the other unpleasantness that comes with our daily commute. But equally, you know, the message is that we are still living off our, our smart devices, regardless of where we may be physically or geographically located. So the rise of the mobile consumer, um, what this has done is massively supercharge, you know, the, the customer experience revolution. And as I said before, everywhere you go, everybody's on their smart devices. And this is driving consumers to be more intelligent because they've got access to information. You know, it's all at the ends of our fingertips. And what this is doing is driving behaviors where our expectations are even greater now than it was before. And having the power of the internet in the palms of our hands has revolutionized how tech is consumed. Um, and as well as consumed, it's, it's revolution, excuse me, revolutionized how, how technology is used as well. And consumers, um, they want and demand the same experience, whether they're interacting with the business or interacting with their friends and their loved ones. And the key thing for this one is it has to be simple. And when we talk about simple, it has to be easy and it has to be easy for everybody, not just for the few. It has to be easy for the majority. So the five keys to customer experience when we think about the, the mobile consumer. <clears throat> So we've got five listed on here. Um, there are a lot more, but I just want to highlight five. So the first one, accessibility. So again, I'm going to keep reiterating the message because the experience should be familiar and it should be similar, irrespective of whether I engage with a business or anything else from my laptop or from my smart device. When you consider personalization, from the very first hello to, to the final goodbye, we should be having things like analytics that provides insights to, to our journeys, as well as what went well. And the key thing is what didn't go so well, so that that experience can be continually tailored and enhanced moving forward. So self-service options, um, I want to transact at a time that suits me, irrespective of what day of the year it is, if it's a public holiday, um, if it's not a public holiday, if it's weekends or out of hours, I shouldn't be restricted by that. So consumers want interactions um, which are humanized and, and not sort of dehumanized. And what I mean by this is that we want to feel like the business knows us and that they're taking our, our personal insights, our, our personal preferences into account every single time. E-commerce, so key success metric five, four, sorry. Um, I want the confidence to know that my transactions are safe and secure. This is critical, especially when we haven't got the, the comfort or, or sometimes the confidence to know that, you know, we're all at, in a business and we're all protected by the usual infrastructure. We're at home where everything is, is really, really different. 
but this should not have impact and it should not affect our security and it should not affect any of those communications and how we, trans how we transact in terms of the security elements. And when we consider social, so educational, training, loyalty programs, online communities and forums, I still want to engage on, on, on social. So this is about not just via you know, our corporate web pages, we should meet the customers where they are. We need to meet and engage customers wherever they may be and where possible, not make those customers come to us. But then COVID happened and we all know what that was like because we've all lived it and we've all breathed it. But what is really interesting is that the things I talked about on the previous slides, the five keys to success, is that none of it is new to us. We've been talking about this for a really, really long time, but then COVID happened and everything has now become hyper accelerated. So people want to be able to interact and do business from their homes. And a lot of people don't even want to go out. They don't want to go and visit a premise. And these post COVID experiences, these are the ones that need to be made easier. These are the ones that have been made easier by a lot of businesses and those businesses that have shown customer loyalty, they've demonstrated that they put their customers first. These are the businesses that are going to do well, despite the economic conditions. And as customers, this is what we will always remember. And we will be loyal to those businesses who have evolved for the good and continue to put customers at the center of their business, as well as the people that they employ to run their businesses. A positive shift in experience. So we have seen some significant shifts um, in terms of the, the type of customer experience and the organization that that pertains to. And I don't think this slide will show up anything that's a real surprise. Um, retail has been the real hero. And I think they've had to be the hero because you know their, their business, their survivability has, has depended on this at all for every aspect. So the kind of question we asked was, uh, question for have you seen positive shifts in the type of customer experience and how was that differed or how was that changed in response to the pandemic and then what we did is ask ask the people that responded to our survey in which industries have you seen this positive shift select all that um select all that apply and as you can see retail are figuring at the top followed closely by healthcare Hospitality have taken a, a, a massive, massive hit in terms of the pandemic because of the nature that we all do business. But what they are doing is differentiating and they're differentiating on experience by staying in touch with their customer base and maintaining a line of communication so that when all of this hopefully is a distant memory, we will come back and we will be loyal to those organisations. So I just want to talk about the frustrations that we all experienced. And if you look at this slide again, the frustrations that were raised during that survey are the same frustrations that we've been hearing for many, many, many years. Um, being transferred to multiple customer representatives and having to repeat yourself over and over, this is still the number one problem that we all are continually sort of being inflicted on every time you know, we engage with some businesses, not all businesses being placed on hold. Nobody wants to be put on hold for an innate amount of time and listening to, to music that you wouldn't normally want to even listen to. Having to navigate through multiple, multiple layers of IVRs when all you want to do is speak to a human agent. And then, you know, the response time when using a chat feature, you can always tell, can't you, when, when you're chatting with somebody, whether their, their business is joined up at the other end or even whether that, that person typing um, is, is a fate, you know, we, we, we're typing at a speed that maybe we are familiar with. And again, having to navigate through different types of applications that are not particularly user friendly. These all add to the, to the negatives, I guess, of friction when it comes to the customer experience. And then a lack of capabilities for, for people that have special needs in, and they want things that are particular personal and, and pertaining to their to their different experiences and how they want to engage, whether it be non-verbal or just doing it on chat. We have to be, we have to be more frictionless with every, every, every interaction. And then you can see the stars on the right hand side. And what we're showing here is the, the star that's got the, the white in the center. This means more females, more males, sorry, than females. And then the reverse is more females than males. 
And this is about um, how the numbers increase depending on the gender and, and depending on the age. So demographics have a big part to play in how we engage and why we engage. And when I think back to 2020 and, and in the years previous to that, demographics always play a huge part in the preference of using chatbots. And I stand by the fact that more people would use them today if their experience was positive and easier in the first instance. Having to have oodles of patience to go through laborious and painful processes time and time again is not what anybody wants. So we have to put the, cent the customer at the center of everything we do. We have to understand the customer journey and we have to put ourselves in the customer's shoes. Because when we do that, then we can remove anything that causes pain. We want to reduce and, and minimize any of the, the usual touch points and allow customers to engage when they want and by whatever media and by whatever means they want. And, and again, I'll just let you look at this slide and, and I think the numbers speak for themselves. Online is here to stay. I would definitely, definitely back up what this slide is saying. So because of COVID and because of the pandemic, um, how we shop, how we interact with businesses is very, very different. A lot of us were using online services before, but because the because these services are no longer familiar to us in terms of what you know, we can go to a customer premise, we have to engage online, especially when there's certain services that we are relying upon. And when you look at the information on this slide, so the number one thing is, will I continue to rely on these services in a, in a post-pandemic pandemic world? And the answer is, is a resounding yes. Equally is, have I found them more convenient to use? And those businesses where they have been com convenient means that the uptake will continue to be the same in, in, in a, in a post-pandemic world. And where the answer is no, then what that means is customers will look elsewhere and what they will do then is engage on experience and they will continue to, to stay with those companies that are con consistently providing a good experience online and making sure that those interactions are not painful. So some of the CX impacts of COVID-19 COVID are what you can see on this slide. But I think what I also wanted to do is show you some of the additional research that we have had to, to sustain and back up the surveys that we took place. And these are the actions that can be taken irrespective of the type of business that you may be uh, with a focus on customer experience. Again, this isn't rocket science and it'll make a lot of sense when you read these slides. But what we don't see is that these CX impacts or the answers to them they're not being sort of embodied and they're not being taken up as best practices for too many businesses out there. So we have to focus on care and concern. We have to be reaching out as an organization, not just when we wanna sell something, not just when things are going wrong. We have to communicate when things are good as well so that we can stay true to the company values and our company purpose. And I know I've said this on, on the previous slide, but meet customers where they are. Don't force them to come to a web page which might not be conducive for the type of business that we want to do. And then reimagine a post-world uh, pandemic environment. So a lot of businesses have been hit you know, economically as well as loads and loads of other areas. And it's forced them to sort of look at how they engage. It's, it's forced them to look at you know, where their people are. A lot of those businesses haven't got the infrastructure to sustain this moving forward. So there has to be a nod to the future. We have to start planning what's good, what are we gonna do as organizations and businesses so that we can remain agile. And then we need to look at continually evolving so that we can continue to put the customer at the center of our businesses and then pay attention to whatever might be the next, you know, the next Twitter, the next WhatsApp application and look at how businesses are consuming those and engaging with them and allowing consumers to engage with the business with the same tools. Market shifts continuing 2021 20, and beyond are the usual suspects, cloud delivered, real time interactions, and that's historical as, as well as in real time. 
omni-channel conversations, this is critical to helping business achieve first contact resolution, making sure that we're not passing people from pillar to post, and using data. Use data as our friend. Data design decision-making processes, and this is always about looking at the, the customer insights, looking at what, what went really well, as well as looking at what didn't go so well and trying to sort of expose our customers to intu intuitive experience for the employer, so for the agents, for the supervisors, for every every persona that's in the, in the business, and as well as the customers that they engage. So when you can look at the, the market shifts that I'm showing you here, this was definitely the same in 2020. But again, because of the, the hyper-accelerated growth as a result of us all being remote, we, we are seeing huge, huge demands for this, and it's only going up in 2021. So it would be remiss of me not to talk about, you know, our holistic solution, as well as customer experience, a contact center, and any, everything that's in between. So again, Mitel is a fully featured communication solution. We have a lot of things in that kit bag, but I just wanted to talk to you about some of the messages that encompass our whole portfolio. So when I think back to why customers engage Mitel, why our partners in engage Mitel, customers typically come to Mitel for three reasons. The first one is infrastructure modernization. Second one, access to next generation applications. And then the third one is customer experience. And I just want to say that customer experience is not just limited to, to, to the contact center. Mm -hmm. Customer experience is any engagements, whether it be internal, whether it be external. And, and even, you know, when I'm talking to my colleagues, you know, everybody, we should be treating them as if they're a customer, whether, whether they sit four feet from us in the office environment, everybody is a customer and customer experience CX is at the center of everything. So whether your business is small, medium or large, we have a solution at Mitel that can address and grow with a business. That's the key thing here, a solution that you can always, always go back and recognize the investment, um, never ever doing a rip and replace and having a solution that grows with the business. What we also want to do at Mitel is work and collaborate with you shoulder to shoulder. You know, as our partner, we want to stand next to you and add value wherever we can. So when and how we do this is entirely up to yourselves. But fundamentally, we want to add value with delivery services that can be done by yourselves, 100%. And or we can complement that with uh, what we can do within our prefer um, professional services offering. So I just want to talk about the five C's to enable a customer, a successful, sorry, customer experience and employee experience, because both of them are very much intertwined. So when we look at cloud, so in this volatile market, I think we have to agree that cloud has emerged as an essential strategy for enabling businesses to transition to a more agile working model. The need for seamless communication and collaboration has never been greater. So we will start to see a wider adoption of cloud solutions for unified communications, business collaboration, and contact center elements. And this dovetails nicely into collaboration tools. As organizations are looking to improve engagements with their workforce, business communications technology will continue to experience rapid growth. I think we're already seeing that. We also believe here at Mitel that we will be stronger by providing a focus on adopting cloud-based UC solutions that support a hybrid model, because not everybody is going to want to do a lift and a shift to the cloud. What we want to do is support that by allowing businesses to move at a pace that suits them. And then when we do that, we can also enable employees to access everything from virtual assistance to in-depth analysis and analytics, as well as video collaboration, irrespective of where you may be. And obviously the focus on here is contact center. And as I said before, in most of the slides, actually, the pandemic has shifted. And what that's meant is that many consumers are not going to stores anymore. They're relying on digital services. So creating a better online customer experience is, will be a major threat and it will continue to be so in 2021. We've seen the, the consumer adoption of digital, digital customer experience tool go through the roof. And as it increases, 
what they consume will start to widen as well. So if you think back to some of the survey slides that I showed you earlier, almost half of the consumers that we interviewed expect to be using more chatbots. And the key thing to remember is that when you're using chatbots, they don't necessarily have to have a contact center artificial intelligence within there. There's a lot of chatbot functionality that you can use just out of the box without any AI, which allow us to do things like optimize and streamline services that the majority of businesses are really quite happy with, as well as the customers that they are serving. And then when you think about um, virtual agents and self-service technologies, couple that into everything that we're talking about with customer experience. The customer experience, whether it be internally or externally, is only going to be more positive. And then the last two I want to talk about and, and bring them both together. So that's culture and community. And the reason why I think these two should be really, it should be one column really bringing them both together is that when you build a, a strong company culture and then also focus on the community, it's really crucial to, to the success of the organization, the people who are within it and the customers that we are serving. And then adding the fact that the majority of the workforce is remote, no matter how large or how small an organization, an organization must be, might be, sorry, it's going to add levels of complexity because we're all so separate from each other. So part of the solution has to be trust, which is foundational to the remote culture that a lot of us are striving to achieve. We're making good headway for sure, but we need to keep coming back and focusing on trust. But trust goes both ways. So when we think about trust, it has to be that the leaders must trust their employees and the employees must trust their managers and the managers also trust everybody else. So again, it's the, it's the circle of life really. But it can be really hard to build trust when we're all so distant. So we do need to look at new ways to forge personal connections, as well as how we engage with the customers and bringing everybody closer together. So that will help sort of build up a sense of belonging and then make the community aspect join together with the culture and the values that we all embody every single day. So whilst we do recommend holding video meetings on a regular basis, um, sometimes it's really nice as well just to have voice communications. And the reason I say that is because a lot of us are experiencing video fatigue and it's really nice to be able to have a voice conversation where we can get up off our desks. I don't know about you, but I like pacing around everywhere and you know I do a lot of my thinking when I'm kind of on the move even if it's just you know walking up and down the stairs and I think customers are, are open to that now and certainly a lot of the engagement that I've been having of late um, customers customers are asking for voice voice conversations unless you know we're collaborating or, or we're sharing some some slideware or, or some important messaging that that pertain to them but for the most part you know we I'm seeing a huge huge uptake in voice again the other thing is, you know, when you do that sort of, you know, empowering everybody, bringing everybody at the center, making sure that we've got trust at, at every aspect of our communications. I think it inspires, it, it inspires the customers, it inspires the people. And then it, it just aligns us all better to, to our vision. And it makes for a better customer experience when we're all together on the same page. And there, is our customer experience presentation and we've come to an end um so i just want to say that was a really quick whistle stop tour of of customer experience taking us from data to to digital and if you've got any questions please reach out to to your partner at xylos and they'll be very very happy to take your questions and if any of you would like to do any follow-up follow-ups or go into anything that i discussed in a lot more detail feel free to, to reach out and we can set up some remote sessions and talk about it some more. Thank you, everybody. Nice to speak to you today.